All right, so I'm gonna go set up our A51 sluice box. This is a great mid-size, mid-cost sluice. It's kind of just the right size to handle a lot of production, but still small enough to be able to pack into remote areas. So um, this has been kind of a workhorse for a lot of decades for us. So I'm gonna go inside, so kind of prep the area a little bit. We'll see how lucky I get, how close I got. You know, setting up a sluice box always takes time, so you have to be patient. Again, the sluice box is pretty flat. I'm gonna get a little bit more water in here, I think. What he's doing is he's trying to get the rocks set up just right to help divert some of that flow into the sluice. Yes, yeah, see, I want to get a fair flow. amount of water so I can move a decent amount of volume of material. I don't want to just feed, just baby feed. I want to get some material pounding through the sluice box. Look about right, you think? It's pretty good. Looks huh? fine. Okay, let's try feeding a little material through it. That was actually a pretty easy setup. You guys got so we we've already gone through classifying the material, so we've got some material here that I'm gonna run. Alright, awesome. Now you'll notice with this loose is that it'll handle quite a bit more material. You wanna help Newt? Yeah, it's working pretty good. Now, when I'm feeding it by hand like this, I can actually feed from one side to the other, watching the sluice box work. Which you can only really do once it's all classified. That yeah. stuff is classified a little bit smaller, too. Yeah, it is. Which makes it easy. I could almost use a little bit more speed of water, I think, though. That's a little faster, maybe a little more, a little more um, height on the box. A little more hit or aim, that's too much. That looks good right there. You think? Yeah, it's now it's spinning a little better. I don't like this rock here though. So a little, gotta find just the right compromise. Did some fine tuning on this loose box. I went ahead and uh, changed the position a little bit, moved it forward a little bit. But you'll notice there's a nice V in the middle of the sluice, so it tells me the water's kind of centralized. And I have a pretty good water flow going through. I have a good, pretty good pitch. I'm probably running probably around three quarters to about half inch per foot. So if you have a three foot sluice box, that means you're going to have anywhere from one inch to one and a half inch drop on the sluice box. But I like the way it's working, so I'm going to feed it and see how, how, it, how it looks. Yeah, it's eating up the material nicely. I'm... Feed me. Feed me. Yeah, you can have, I can, I can probably run, I'd say twice as fast as the other sluice. What do you think, Pat? The other box, I think, is six and a half inches wide. This loose is about. 10. I think you can run two to three times more materials. What I think. Uh, you, well, it is actually doing quite a bit more. But you know, I suppose I did like the small sluice because it was easy. To you make. know, the idea of the real small ones, if you're backpacking into a faraway place and you're limited on weight and you're limited on size, because yep. you got a lot of stuff to carry with you. Yeah, but this is really not much bulkier, but this is eating up the material really fast. I'm actually fight, you know, feeding different positions on it.
<laughs> yeah, this fruit is eating out the material pack. It's doing a good job. But again, the nice thing about this loose, it's small, it's compact, but it moves a lot of material. All right, guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm feeding the sluice box, but I, these guys have dug up some pre-classified material for me. So now what I'm gonna do is I get it pre-wet before I feed it. If you take dry material and you feed it onto a sluice box, the surface tension of the gold will have the gold float directly off. So it's always, a, well, it's kind of not just a good idea. You have to get the material wet ahead of time if you want to feed it. So, but this is already wet. Oh, I am seeing some stuff on the indicator, Matt. Because that's from the different spot that we need to get back to. I think that first spot was better, Pat. This one doesn't even look as good, but you know, you don't know if you try different spots. Every area you go to is always different. Yeah, one of the other nice things about this being out here is being out in nature. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Hear the birds. We're not getting stung by bees. We are getting eaten up by gnats. <laughs> well, that's why you should have put a little insect yeah, repellent on. And we need to hear my dog whine. Now, you can also run a lot more energy for, from that sluice if you want to. Yeah, normally I would, but we didn't want to, we wanted to kind of show it in more of a typical generic type condition, but this is working okay. It's kind of mature. You know what? I, I think I see a piece of uh, gold on that mat from here. Teddy. It's new. You guys helping. Yeah, as long as he doesn't eat any of our gold. I'm training it to be gold sniffing dog. I like that. Gold sniffing. Yeah, I'm seeing a couple of spots pop up right now. I know. Dude, are you helping? Or are you just being a pain in the butt? Yes. Wait, that's why I was running the back end. Okay, spilling some of that material, getting down to the end of the bucket. Yep. And you know what's interesting? I normally find a lot of my gold at the end of the bucket. When you shake it all down and have to carry that bucket a ways, sometimes that gold seems to work its way down. Or it's that last bit of little mud on the bottom of the bucket that's the gold sticking to. Easy there. All right, what you got going there, Daniel? Oh man, I got some, hopefully some good material. It's got a lot of black sand, got a lot of color specs showing. We're gonna run this through the sluice and see what we come up with. I noticed there's a lot of clay in the hole. Yeah, there's some, but you know, you know what they say about that clay. You can what trap you your gold, <laughs> or you can lose your gold. So we won't know until we find out. Now use your trowel. So we're gonna run this through the sluice and see. All right. All right, here, just let me dump that in here. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, God. You find any rattlesnakes? Not funny, no rattlesnakes. <laughs> There's a little bit of unclassified material in there, too. Yeah, but they, they'll handle it, Pat. I know it will. There's not a lot of big rocks in here. It's not big enough rocks that's going to scalp the gold out. I see some stuff on the indicator, Matt. Oh, I do, too. Oh, yeah, that's the spot, guys. we got to go check that spot out a little deeper. careful about showing our surrounding areas so people don't know where our hot spot is. All right. Okay, Pat, you do the cleanup? I gotta get my back up. Uh, anything in there? 
Dude, there's one big piece and a bunch of little pieces I see. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Did you look at that, boys? That's some California gold. I told you. <laughs> You're right. Oh, yeah. Get a little closer here. Oh, yeah. We peppered in there a little bit. Good deal. All right. Let's get this A51 sluice cleaned up. Okay. We've been running this A51 here for a few minutes. Actually, for about a half hour. We got a, a good amount of black sand in there. That means we're going to catch that fine gold. You see gold on our indicator mat, and now it's time to clean the sluice off. Let me show the indicator mat real quick. Pat. Yeah, I can see it from here too. Sometimes I put a little bit of uh, stuff in the bucket. If it wants to float away from you, sometimes you just drop a rock in there and that keeps your sluice from floating away. Keeps your bucket from floating away. Okay, we're gonna be very careful picking up the sluice. Oh yeah, a lot of fine gold in here. Okay, I'm gonna clip the ripples. Okay, uh, you want to hand me that pan right there? Yeah, those river latches are amazing. They never fail. They're always reliable. Always give you good, secure lockdown. Okay. So he just took out his riffle board. Now he's yep. taking out the expanded metal. Now that looks pretty clean. Yep. <clears throat> now I'm going to slide my carpet into the bucket. Wash off the indicator mat. Make sure my sluice is inside the bucket. That would be most unfortunate. Well, I think I've... The thing is with me and Mark going out and doing this, I think we've made every mistake you could ever make. And that's how you learn. It's all yep. about experience. Prop is clean. Okay. Now I'm going to wash the carpet off. Get a little more violent with the carpet. Make sure we wash all of our black sand out of it. Again, that carpet really does a good job holding on to the gold. Oh yeah, and this is the best way to do it because yep. as I roll it back and forth, I open up those riffles in the carpet. That looks clean. Like I said earlier, you could have a couple of little fly poops of, uh, of gold in there, but you know it'll be into the next time you clean it up, so you don't stress over that stuff. Remember, guys, it's, you got to move volume. We're not out here just moving a little small amount at one time. We're trying to move, you know, bucket after bucket after bucket. Put a rock in the pan. No, not, not a big enough rock. There we are. Okay. Then is a whistle. Okay. I'll use the riffles first. I'm using a Keen SP14. Spend more time shaking your material than washing it out. Okay, I see some bigger rocks in there. Sometimes you want to check those rocks. Well, they are the heaviest ones. We got a good amount of black sand in there. If you're finding a good amount of black sand, you're gonna get that fine gold. If the sluice runs too clean and you're not getting any of the black sand, you're washing black sand out, you're washing fine gold out.
And Pat, how long do you should run the sluice before you clean it out? But probably... You know what? It just depends on okay. the level of uh, black sand. When the black sand starts to cover the green carpet, then the gold can actually skid right on top of it. But typically you want to clean it up, you know, probably five to every five to ten buckets if you don't have a lot of black sand. You kind of, every place you go to is a little bit different. You're getting down there a little bit. Yeah, I got a little, little bit of rocks in there. Those are always a problem, especially when you swirl your black sand around. So right now, inspect. Yeah. Toss. Look at that, a good amount of black sand in there. Yeah. And oh, chunks of magnetite, oh, yep. I can see it up in here in the front. Oh, look at that one nice picker. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Shit. Then? That's impressive. All right, well, let's, let's get this separated, suck it up, move on to the next loose. I want to get to the big sluice in this so we can pound material through it. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, let's do it.